Hey guys, Dr. Dex here, and today I want to show you something that is very simple, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. So uh, it's probably the most used tool that I have in my arsenal, and that's how to read a tape measure. All right, so the first thing you need to do is go get yourself a Stanley Fat Max, because they're the best tape measure out on the market, in my humble opinion. So uh, Fat Max are the bomb. You kind of see something on the front of there. We'll get into that a little bit later. It's also something you're going to want to get a, your hands on. So what I want to do is break down the tape measure into feet and inches. This is an imperial tape measure. So uh, there's no metrics in this. It's all going to be from the imperial scale. So uh, let's get to it. So the first thing you'll see in a tape measure is there's an inch mark for every inch. So obviously one through whatever, 240 inches. Our 25 foot tape measure has 300 inches, I think. So you'll look at each mark inside of a particular number. Let's go with between four and five, all right? So you'll notice there's 16 marks between four and five on your tape measure. Those are called sixteenths. So each one of these little tiny marks represents one sixteenth of an inch. If you add one sixteenth and one sixteenth together, you get two sixteenths, which is equivalent to one eighth of an inch. So we'll go one sixteenth, two sixteenths, which is an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, four sixteenths, if you break it down numerically, becomes one quarter. That's the lowest common denominator for four sixteenths. All right, I'm not a mathematician here. I'm just trying to help you guys figure this out. So then it goes 5 sixteenths, 6 sixteenths, which is 3 eighths, 7 sixteenths, 8 sixteenths, which is a half inch, 9 sixteenths, 10 sixteenths, which is 5 eighths of an inch, 11 sixteenths, 12 sixteenths, which is 3 quarters, um, 13 sixteenths, and then 14 sixteenths, which is 7 eighths. And then there's 15 sixteenths, and finally 16 sixteenths, which is one inch. Okay, we're gonna make this a little more simplistic for you now. So what I'm gonna do is I want you to think about this in eighths of an inch in eighths, in one eighth increments. So if you add two sixteenths, you have one eighth. Okay, that's your first one you wanna remember. One eighth, and then two eighths, which is a quarter. So it goes one eighth, one quarter. 3 eighths, a half inch, 5 eighths, 3 quarters, 7 eighths, and a full inch, okay? Now, why did I abandon all the 16ths? Because we're going to put that on a plus and a minus scale, all right? So what that means is if I say cut me something 4 and a half minus, I'm telling you to cut something 4 and a half minus a 16th. If I say cut me something four and a half plus, then I'm gonna ask you to cut me something four and a half plus a sixteenth. So it'd either be four and a half minus, which is actually four and seven sixteenths, or four and a half plus, which is four and nine sixteenths. But instead of saying all of those sixteenths, we're gonna call them pluses and minuses. So now you ask, okay, what's the difference between four and a half plus and four and five eighths minus, absolutely nothing. It's the exact same measurement, okay? So four and three quarters plus is right here, four and three quarters, or four and three quarters minus is right there. So let's review. We have four and an eighth, four and a quarter, four and three eighths, four and a half, four and five eighths, four and three quarters, four and seven eighths. You'll notice that the half inch mark is the widest mark in the one inch scale. Then your quarters are also identified by a lesser height mark and followed by your eighth inch, which are a little bit lower than the quarter marks. So it's a little bit easier to identify each mark as you go. All right, so now we're gonna review and have a little test. All right, you guys, so um, I'm gonna move it over. I'm gonna make it more complicated. I'm gonna move up the scale to a six. There we go. All right. So where is six and three quarters at? 
Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? Six and three quarters would be right there. Six and three quarters. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters. All right. Somebody show me what eight and a half is. It's right in the center of your screen. I knew you knew that. Good job. All right. How about seven and a quarter? Seven and a quarter is right there. If you count, you can you can figure out seven and a quarter a couple different ways. You could add two eighths is a quarter, four sixteenths is also a quarter. But also you could just look for the second highest line, the first one, seven and one quarter. Uh, my producer's asking for a little more um, challenging. So let's go six and five eighths plus. Six and five eighths plus a sixteenth, right there. All right, you guys catch that? Six and five eighths plus, or for the hardcore, it's six and eleven sixteenths. Hey, chime in and let me know. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Is this system easy? Is it what you already use? Have you never done this before and were scared to read a tape measure and didn't know what the heck all these lines were? Or are you just a simple rock star and you already knew this stuff? How about six minus? How about six minus? Six minus is right there. All right? You're going to six inches and you're going to minus one sixteenth. Five and seven eighths plus. Can anyone figure out where five and seven eighths plus is? Huh. It's the same spot I just told you before. It was six minus. It's the same measurement, all right? It's also called five and 15 sixteenths. All right, guys. So now you know how to read a tape measure. But I got a couple other things I want to tell you about. All right? Okay, so every 16 inches, you'll notice a red square throughout the tape measure. 16, 32, 48, 64, 80, and so on and so on, okay? So what those indicate is every 16 inches on center, a lot of houses are built that way and a lot of decks are built that way. So I like to use those as indicators. When I'm framing 16 inches on center, that's what I use as an indicator and that's how I know that it's a special mark because it's red instead of black. So that's why these are red every 16 inches. Is It's a, just a handy way to do 16 inch layouts. A lot of house walls are framed that way, okay? All right, so a couple more features about the tape measure. The first foot, you'll notice that there's no red numbers. It's just one through 12. But then you'll see 13, 14, 15, 16 on up, and but you'll also see one, two, three, four in red. So you could say, I'm one foot one inch or 13 inches. I'm one foot eight inches or 20 inches. And sometimes for clarity, it's easier to say 20 foot four inches or 204. Sometimes we get confused. So what we like to do is we, we usually are calling out measurements in numerical uh, ways with not a foot and an inch increment. But sometimes to clarify, we might have to call out a number and then say as well, uh, one foot six inch okay now you're also probably looking over here and you see this little tiny diamond every 19 and an eighth plus or 19 and a quarter minus or 19 and three sixteenths all right those are for special floor joists in framing houses where you're allowed to go on center further away than 16 inches so in, in standard construction Every 19 and 3 16 you can span a floor joist, a TJI floor joist or an engineered plywood uh, truss joist for your floor. And you can use that diamond to do your markings for that. Something else, when you're doing your tape measure and you got it way, way out, don't let it come in and slam. Always slow your tape down a little bit right before you get to the end. It'll prolong the life of your tape. A quality tape measure will have uh, a triple riveted end. So that's why I like these Fat Max tapes. This is a 25 footer. I really dig it. I put a little customized little heartbeat logo on mine so I know my team doesn't use it because we're very, very territorial about our tape measures. And also 
Okay, so another cool thing, um, this scratch pad right here uh, is invaluable because you can write uh, 34 or 24 and 13 sixteenths, which is what? Calvin? This is 24 and 3 quarters plus. Now, when you're rifling through tons of measurements, this thing comes in super handy, and then they just wipe away. All right, and I'm gonna give FastCap a quick plug on this because um, they have some really great tools. They're doing some really great innovations. So check out FastCap.com, and they sell these right online, and they just stick right. I just like a standard Fat Max 25 footer. Um, I've had the 30 footers, the 35 footers. They just weigh you down. It, for me, it's the perfect size. All right, one other thing I'm gonna throw in here because it's kind of in the same aisle. If you go to Home Depot and you buy your Fat Max. A quick snap is gonna save your life. All right, this thing tucks onto your shirt and this thing sticks to it. And it's life-changing. Whenever, if I don't have one of these on, on, my show, on my shirt and I'm talking to somebody, I need to write something down, I go reach for my pencil and it's not there if I'm not wearing this. Um, everybody on my team has them. I have 15 of them laying around because we're constantly losing them or taking them home with us. But Quick Snap uh, is a pretty cool product. It's made by Mag Grip, so you might check them out as well. Um, I can't say enough about how much I love these. I would totally endorse these if they would call me. All right, well, that concludes my uh, tutorial on how to read a tape measure. Uh, I'm sure there's some other secrets in there. Feel free to chime in and let me know what I forgot. Um, but if you're in a pinch and you just need to learn how to read a tape, I hope this helps. And best of luck with your measurements. If you did like this, please click subscribe. And if you want to get more notifications when we're putting out new content, please also toggle the bell icon. Thank you very much and have a great day.